We're seeing that right now. We saw it from some of the German cardinals, but I presume you've done a deep dive into this. So what's this push to kind of normalize or uh, virtuize, not a word, uh, homosexual acts and fornication and things like this? Right. That's one of the main uh, areas of uh, Catholic dissent uh, by church leadership. And it's... Uh, in the last six months, we've had the Cardinal of Luxembourg, Holler, Cardinal Hollerick, uh, say in an interview that the Catholic Church is teaching homosexuality is wrong. And he's the general relator of the synod, of the upcoming synod of bishops. Well, a synod that's underway, but that will have its its Rome meeting in 2023. And this is a cardinal who's, in effect, the head of that, uh, saying that the teaching of the church is wrong. Great. Yeah, <laughs> no. And, and he's not the only one. Uh, he's not the only one. You had Cardinal yeah. Marx, uh, <laughs> known as rather conservative up to the point when he was made a cardinal and then was uh, president of the German Bishops' Conference, has, uh, <laughs> has come out with a, a series of strange statements and actions in the past few months, most recently calling for a change in the catechism of the Catholic Church particularly regarding homosexuality and homosexual acts. He is accompanied uh, by his uh, colleague and, and uh, um, Bishop Betzing, who uh, has made similar statements. Uh, but this isn't this isn't really. Yeah, Betzing is the president of the Bishops Conference yes, of Germany. So he's he the leading bishop now among the German hierarchy. Yes. So, but this isn't really. It's not really new. It's it's accelerating in the past yeah. few months. But if you look back for the over the past several years, whether it was the family synod, uh, there was already an attempt um, to uh, through the working document called the Instrumentum Laboris, uh, which is part of uh, the working document for um, each synod. Mm -hmm. Each synod has one. Uh, one things of the youth synod uh, that happened. It didn't get a lot of attention, but there were some. Um, attempts there uh, through the documents and through certain initiatives and people involved to introduce uh, a normalization of homosexuality. I, remem into I remember too the UCAT seemed to uh, look favorably or at least more favorably on masturbation. I'm oh not sure if you remember that from the no, UCAT. No, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I have a vague remembrance of yeah. that, but but that, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Yeah, don't know. So, I, but it seems as though in the months, and even since we 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 did the original interviews for the books, for the book, um, it's accelerating more and more, wow. and really re reaching a, a critical point, I would say. Mm. But the good thing is, is that you also have some of the cardinals and bishops of the church yeah. who are now beginning to go on the offense against this and to address these statements made particularly by the German bishops. So you had how, the, how many bishops are doing that right now? Because I saw well, a you had a letter day. you had a letter that came out last week, an open letter, I believe, to the German bishops. And it was at that point it was signed by seventy prelates, so bishops and cardinals, uh, including Cardinal Powell yeah. From your Love native him. land, uh, Cardinal yeah. Burke, Cardinal um, Napier from Car South Africa, Cardinal Napier, Cardinal Arinzi from from right. Africa as well. Yeah. Um, so to get seventy prelates together and to more stand have up, signed since. and more of signed yeah. since. So that I think I think the faithful will find that so heartening. Yeah. Because one of the most difficult things I think for the the normal layperson who is tuned in to what's going on in the church perhaps confused or perhaps not confused and is seeing things quite clearly. That for the lay faithful, I think is painful enough or difficult enough, but not seeing the shepherds of the church and seeing no one care enough to, to stand, them. well, to stand up. Yeah. So this, I think that this, uh, this uh, let open letter from uh, the 70 prelates and now more than that, uh, will be very heartening for the faithful, mm. and I hope that they continue. Yeah, it's so important. I remember when I was a teenager, very much wanting to fornicate and not believe the doctrines of Christianity, was just, I think I used the statement, the banal statement of some priest who said, as long as you're in love, as my kind of green light. Um, not that I needed one, but mm. I sort of justified my actions by appealing to him. All the more if you've got cardinals teaching this filth. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, and Cardinal Hollerick, as Diane mentioned, is the general relator of the Synod, which means he's the one responsible for producing the document. So the Synod on Synodality, which is a two-year process, which will 
uh, have its fulfillment uh, in October of 2023 is now turning into the Synod of Homosexuality because the guy who's going to write the document is telling us we've got to make sure that the teaching is changed. Now, this is outrageous in the highest degree because it's a betrayal of the church's teaching, therefore it's a betrayal of Christ, and it's being carried on by people in leadership roles who took, who took oaths to uphold the very teaching. And, you know, as we point out in the book, the only reason people listen to them is because they're people of authority. If Hollerick were a banker in Luxembourg and said this, no one would, no one would pay attention to him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, in other words, they are. this is the ultimate clericalism, using the position of authority that the church has given you to undermine the church, saying we know better than Christ and the apostles what is important for you to believe. Uh, this is betrayal and subversion. And the sad thing is it's being extensively embraced in uh, Northern European circles. So it is good, as Diane pointed out, that cardinals from a vast range of countries are now saying, no, this has to stop. Yeah. Is it relatively new, the boldness on part of these cardinals? Not to say we could perhaps rethink how we phrase, but no, it, the, the, the church's teaching is wrong. I mean, from my understanding, not even Father James Martin has yet come out and said that those th that strongly. Has well, he? he recently tweeted out um, okay. that <laughs> he's he's more subtle, but <laughs> well, no, and, and he but he tweeted out, you know, you, it's often said, "Hate the sin, love the sinner." Yes, we need to rethink that. Uh, that's because, Aquinas. Aquinas of course, essentially uh, said that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, but so in the Mar Father Martin's tweet, which I'm paraphrasing, he said, "How can." We have to th rethink that because how can someone's love uh, be uh, viewed as sinful? And the answer is disordered love My involving goodness. the yeah. misuse of the sexual faculty it, is, in fact, not real well, love. I, I find that stuff more frustrating than the cardinals because at least the cardinals are saying what they think. Yes. When you get the sense that people aren't saying what they think, but they're being sneaky and sly about it, it's just gross. Well, he's also said he looks forward to the day when people, you know, two homosexuals can enjoy a blessing or, you know, getting married. He yeah. said that in so many words. Okay. So others, I, we criticize Father, I criticize Father Martin in the book. Several ba times. <laughs> ba well, and based on his book, Building a Bridge, in which he says the catechism's teaching on the... Um, in, inherent uh, disordered nature of homosexual attraction uh, that this is, he calls that hateful, or he calls it uh, cruel. He says there's cruelty in the catechism. So, of course, if something is cruel, it's, it's wrong. So he's basically saying the catechism is wrong, but using it in diplomatic language. I'll be interested to see whether he rebukes Marx and Hollerick for their statement, because he's also said elsewhere, I support the teaching of the church. I'll bet you a hundred bucks he doesn't. <laughs> I, I, won't take, I will not take the bet because I'll probably lose. Is he in New York? Where is Martin? Yes, he's based in New York City. What are your interactions like? I mean, I know uh, New York's a big met place. Him on, but... <laughs> yeah, I've met him on a few occasions. We know each other from just a uh, few occasions. Uh, but I haven't talked to him in a number of years. And I, you know, I wrote a critical review in the National Catholic Register of his book. And I never publicly that I saw uh, commented mm. on, even though he commented on other reviews. Father Paul Mankowski, God rest his soul, he wrote a devastating uh, critique of uh, building a bridge by Father Martin. Uh, and that was published in First Things. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he, Father Martin is a publicist for homosexual normalization in the church. And then beyond it, because the whole bisexual, transsexual thing he's embraced. So... Yeah, he's the American uh, version of the movement in Europe that we're seeing among the Germans. And it is, you know, devastating because it's leading people into sin. There's no, you know, no two ways to explain it otherwise. If you don't think it's a sin to commit sodomy and you encourage people to do it, you're working for the other side. You're not working for Christ. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.